my name is Matsuri and welcome back to my channel where I review, rant and discuss about shows or movies that I recently seen. And today's rant is on Chakshin Ali or One Miss Call. So the reason why this one is a rant and not a review is because I'm going to go through spoilers. And the reason why is because I remember I watched this movie ages ago, like in my teens and I remember the ending annoyed me a little bit and then when we went into lockdown you know I saw it on Netflix and I was like oh yeah I'll watch it for nostalgia's sake and yeah the ending still annoys me and I have my thoughts on it so I thought why not do a rant so like always, I'll go through the rundown of the story for those who haven't seen it or are thinking of seeing it and then I'll go into my thoughts and spoilers. So, here's the story. Our main character is Yumi Nakamura, a uni student studying child psychology. While having dinner with her friends, one of her friends, Yuko, rocks up late due to participating in a funeral. They go to the bathroom when Yuko's phone rings, the infamous ringtone. When Yuko looks at the voicemail, it is from two days in the future, saying, Ah, oh, shit, it's raining. Confused and freaked out, Yuko decides to ignore the message, but on the day of the message, she calls Yumi to invite her to go shopping with her, when she suddenly says, Ah, oh, shit, it's raining. And we then see her thrown onto a moving train. The scene then cuts to see her severed hand dialing a new number, seeking a new victim. The next day, Yumi talks to Kenji, a friend of Yuko, when it is revealed that he also got the voice message and is killed right in front of Yumi's eyes. Traumatized, Yumi's friend, Natsumi, stays to comfort Yumi when she also gets the call. Will Yumi be able to stop the curse before she loses another friend? Yeah. So this is your second warning that there will be spoilers ahead. So if you haven't seen it or are thinking of seeing it, I suggest you stop here, watch the movie and then come back if you like to hear my thoughts. Or if you just don't care, keep watching. So what I like about this movie is I like the overall concept of the fact that you get a voicemail of what you sound like when you die. Like, it was so unique at the time. This was made in 2003 when it was around the time when mobile phones were so easy to get and, you know, it was so popular. I mean, it is still popular now, but like at the time, you know, it was so portable. Every young kid had it, you know, that kind of thing. So the fact that something so close to you that can harm you, you know, it's kind of freaky and it was, you know, such a unique idea at the time, like I said. And what I also like about it is how the deaths are kind of like how they did it in Final Destination, if you've seen that, where they're kind of forced into saying what they hear on their voice message. But what I think would have made it better is that if they made the deaths more subtle, like in Final Destination. Like, for example, in the first death scene, you know, while Yoko is walking, you know, talking to Yumi, you see that the fence is slowly, like, not broken, but it's like being cut. So you see the fence being cut to make a hole. So when Yoko does, you know, say the words and then she screams, she suddenly gets thrown into the fence which causes her to go over and then onto the train and dies. What would have been better, in my opinion, if 
for example, she was looking over the edge for some reason and then somehow was pushed, I guess, or like somehow fell over the edge. And then, or like she was leaning on the fence. You wouldn't think that there's a hole there. And then she kind of topples over and then falls to her death. Like something a little bit more subtle, I think, would have been a bit more creepier. It's the same with the second death as well with Kenji. Um, he dies because the elevator opens and it's pitch black. And then he gets grabbed by an unseen force and then pulled down and falls to his death. I feel like it would have been so much better if he... You know, he's going to the elevator, it opens without looking or, or like from his point of view there's the elevator but from Yumi's point of view there's nothing there and he just falls. Like that would have been so much more creepier than being pulled by a ghost. But again, just my opinion. The other thing I liked about it was the scare factor. I mean, like I said, this is a really good horror movie and it has these random scary and creepy moments. And like my favorite one is that it's actually like the very beginning where Yumi is just talking to her friends and one of her friends just randomly you know talks about a horror movie and then you see this like white hand just on her shoulder and then it just disappears and it's never addressed again like she doesn't talk about it she doesn't tell us that she has psychic abilities nothing just this random hand and it just made me like rewind it and watch it again just to make sure that I didn't miss anything but yeah it's such a creepy moment and there's a lot of those moments in this so the main reason why I wanted to do this rant because like I said the ending <sighs> the ending annoyed me so much well it didn't annoy me but it, it confused me to be honest and to get to the ending I have to talk about this plot point that they have so they do this fake out where they make you believe that the mum Maria is the big bad ghost of the movie and the whole concept or the theme of the movie is that if you are violent towards your child your child would be violent towards another person and then like you know a cycle continues kind of thing and they do this by focusing on the fact that we're meant to believe that Maria has this uh, mental illness and I'm not going to pronounce it because I know I'm going to have half the pronunciation and because she has this illness she's a, she's causing harm to Nanako which is one of her daughters and they wrap up her plot by suggesting that she's, she's killing people because she wants someone to find her or her body and then it fakes us out by saying that it's not Maria whatsoever she's completely innocent it's actually Mimiko who is Maria's older daughter who's actually hurting her younger sister Nanako and it's like eh? <laughs> For this whole, so this whole time it was actually Mimiko that was hurting everyone. Yes, hurting because apparently she wasn't actually killing anyone. She was just hurting them to extreme that they end up dying. But that also doesn't make sense because she was never that extreme to her sister Nanako. Like Nanako was never in danger. She was just found with like bruises or cuts and burns that kind of thing so that overall plot point kind of didn't really work for me and that's why it takes me to the ending because the only reason why I understand the ending now is because I read it on Wikipedia so at the end Yumi does get a voicemail for her death and like I said, they have a fake out because we presume it's all over because we find Maria's body and it's all concluded. But again, a fake out. So Mimiko ends up going, appearing in front of Yumi and then it cuts to Yamashita coming to Yumi's side. Side note, Yamashita is this guy that was investigating the deaths because he's sister also passed away from the phone call 
and they have this like really random love interest story but doesn't really go anywhere to be honest and well anyway he comes to her side you know being like are you safe are you okay and then when they hug Yumi is actually like has a knife and stabbed Yamashita in the mirror's reflection you see that it's actually Mimiko not Yumi and then Yamashita goes you know falls unconscious we see him wake up in the hospital we see Yumi still holding a knife he she comes to his side she kisses him gives him candy and then just smiles and then we see the blue sky and then you hear this like upbeat j-pop when i first saw that i was like what like it didn't make any sense and then like i said i read it in wikipedia so apparently Mimiko was possessing Yumi and is now using Yamashita as her new nanako or like her new toy I guess you can say and so that's why it's all happy at the end like there was no indication in the whole movie for one that there was a connection between Yumi and Mimiko and what I mean by that is Throughout the movie, it is hinted that Yumi was abused by her mother. And in the end, it is true that she was abused by her mother. So he is the victim of domestic violence. But Mimiko, on the other hand, had nothing. He was actually doing the abusing. So this connection, there is no connection here. So, and then there's also no connection of why Yumi would want to possess anyone throughout the movie. Like, there's no, there was no indication that she wants to be in the real world at, at the moment. Like, technically there was no connection why she wanted to kill anyone anyway. Oh, I'm sorry. Hurting people to the extreme for, anyway. And why it didn't make any sense to me besides the connection <laughs> is the fact that it just ends with... The, you're meant to get the hint that she was possessed because of the mirror like it would have been so much more clear if for example it cuts to the scene where you see like a glimpse of Mimiko you know maybe standing in Yumi's place or at the very end you hear Mimiko being like I'll take you to the hospital which is what was one of her little sayings that she kept on telling Nanako see what I mean this ending doesn't make any sense whatsoever and I wish they remade this movie so that they can change the ending a little bit but who knows yes and that's my rant on Chakshing Ali there is two more movies to go because it is a trilogy and I have watched all three and I do have my thoughts on the other two because my god they sucked in their own way so out of the trilogy this one's the best one I do highly recommend you watch it if you are a horror fan besides the ending the confused ass ending and overall plot that doesn't now thinking about it doesn't really make much sense but it's still pretty scary and still pretty good like for its time i mean it's aged but still pretty good but yes have you seen it have you seen the american version is it any good is it worth watching should i do a review on that one too <laughs> it's one of those kind of want to but not really because i know it's going to be bad but we'll see but yes subscribe for more reviews and rants coming soon remember to give me a like and i'll see you in the next one bye